Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Much to Brian Alvarez's chagrin, The Miz was on the mic for most of the night. Uh, Cole did, you know, make sure to say that he wasn't going to read too much into it. Um, you know, basically, to me, that was kind of like giving an Iggy, um, you know, this is not part of the, the Wyatt's deal, what's taking place tonight. Um, I'm sure he probably was penciled in to have something to do with the Wyatt's, considering that they've done the Wyatt Six production gimmick during his ESPN show. And, you know, the package was addressed to him, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. Drew McIntyre opened the show. He quit on last week's show, but was already in the ring to cut a promo. McIntyre said everyone was talking about saying that he quit, but, well, they're not anymore. They're talking about the fact that Drew beat up Punk in his hometown in Chicago on SmackDown. He told you it would happen. He prayed for it and then made it happen. Told the fans who chant Punk's name that they're dead to him, just like Punk is. He said that he hopes Punk is uncomfortable and in pain and being fed through a straw so he can remember that Drew did that, that to him. He said he didn't want to just take his dignity. He also took this. And he pulled out that Chicago flag colored charm bracelet with AJ and Larry blocks on it. And Drew said that a fan made it for punk. It has no real value except it's sentimental. Drew called Larry a stupid looking dog, which of course then the crowd chanted Larry. Uh, Drew said he's going to enter Money in the Bank and Punk would have to watch alone in pain and misery. McIntyre said he knew what it was like to be alone as everyone chanted Punk's name and everyone in the back accepted Punk when he tried to tell them what kind of person Punk really was and he's going to win the briefcase, cash it in that night and become world champion right in front of Punk's eyes just to spite him. Did he already tip his hand that Punk's going to screw him over after he wins money in the bank? Sounds like it. <laughs> we then got a video recap of the Uncle Howdy atrocities, as they mentioned uh, last week on Raw. Immediately afterwards, they cut to the parking garage where Chad Gable showed up with a mountain of security. Didn't want the cameras on him. He had glasses on. He was beaten up. And as they walked by a production truck, it did stick out to me the very noticeable picture of alexa bliss in her spooky phase uh right there on the truck as he walked by then it was time for braun breaker to come down to the ring which was followed by a commercial for this coming sunday's a e biography legend series on the steiner brothers pretty cool they're doing one on them after the break kathy kelly tried to interview chad but security wouldn't let her she could not confirm the extent of his nor the other victims injuries Jackie Redman then interviewed Ludwig Kaiser. Kaiser said that Breaker was explosive and dangerous, but that he himself was destined for greatness and that Braun was no Ludwig Kaiser. Then it was time for their match. Miz said that Breaker was annoying, but that 20 years ago, there were people that were saying that another young guy on the scene was really annoying, and he turned out to be the first ever two-time Grand Slam champion in company history. So yeah, Tom... Miz compared himself to Braun Breaker. What do you think the tale of the tape is there? That is the one person that Miz should not have compared himself to. Are you kidding me? There's not been one person that has made that comparison between the two of them. I've never seen two more starkly contrasted individuals. Hey, did you know Braun Breaker can hit the ropes at 23 miles an hour? What do they do? They have like the PFL smart cage out there. Oh. What's going on? What do they, they have? Sensors? They have uh, drones tracking I believe, him. I believe they have timed it, and I wouldn't doubt that that's uh, the the case. But um, not every time. Number one and number two, it's becoming like Jim Ross talking about Prince Albert when he first hit WWE, and he's got a hat size of like eight and five eighths or something like that. It's like just becoming the thing now that he can hit the ropes at twenty three miles an hour, but went to break but before they did we got what is becoming a trademark in bronze matches a flying clothesline off the apron uh which sent both he and ludwig kaiser over the announce table when they came back from break they were both in the ring ludwig was in control but that didn't last long breaker hulked up which he is really really good at and ran through a Ludwig clothesline hit the ropes and cannonballed back into him hit a few belly to bellies before the 
run up the ropes Frankensteiner, which is another thing that will never not pop the crowd. They love that. Went for a press slam, but Kaiser slipped out. Braun backdropped him over the ropes and to the floor. He went for a spear, but Ludwig got out of the way, and Braun ended up running into the ring steps. Kaiser then went to do his running sprint around the ring and do a drop kick, but out of nowhere, Sheamus flew in with a jumping knee to lay Kaiser out, and the ref called for a DQ. Nobody complained about this. The crowd went nuts for Sheamus landing that shot, so no big deal on the DQ finish. Sheamus then went to powerbomb Ludwig through the announce table, but Braun speared them both and laid out on the floor, and and that was that. I thought that was you know a pretty awesome a pretty awesome DQ. Yeah, I mean, I am not a big fan of having a competitive match and then having a DQ finish, but like you said, a great run in by Sheamus. They have done a great job recently with the camera work of keeping the person out of view until right when they are about to strike. This was another example of that. And then, you know, to end it off, I thought Sheamus was going to, you know, powerbomb Ludwig Kaiser, but Braun Breaker, he's had enough of people interfering. He took out Sheamus, and I thought it came off really well. They've done such a great job crafting what the fans' perception of Breaker should be. And obviously there was a visceral thing with him anyway. People were going to like him, but they are they really did a great job inflating his physical characteristics. I mean, he's barely six feet tall. He's all muscle and great feet and all that, but he's he they put him in with guys his size or smaller, which to help create this aura of this badass. He's killed smaller job guys and squashed them. His first target was Ricochet, who was much smaller. First standout match was against Ilya Dragunov, who physically he matches up great against. And now with Kaiser, who's taller than he is, but with a slimmer build, like all of those guys could work as well. They've done such a good job with him. Not that they've done a terrible job with Carmelo Hayes, but they've, I think, done a much better job with Braun, I think, because those are two guys that are always going to be compared to each other on the way up. Yeah, but they are much different characters they're much different wrestlers you couldn't put Carmelo Hayes out there and have him run through people and be the physical threat that Braun Breaker is right off the bat because well he's not the physical threat that Braun Breaker is very few people are so you know Carmelo Hayes has kind of been a victim I guess you could say a 50-50 booking but it's been 50-50 against the top of the ladder on Smackdown he got a pin over Randy Orton of all people this past week. So I, I don't think uh, he's going to be any worse for wear in the long run. But, yeah, they're always going to be compared with each other. But, you know, they're, once again, two completely different characters. A little bit later in the show, Braun was freaking out on Adam Pierce backstage, saying he was sick and tired of people interfering in his matches, said he would have beaten Kaiser if Sheamus hadn't interfered, and he would, be, would have beaten Sheamus last week if Kaiser didn't interfere. He thought he should have a title match with Sami Zayn by now. Sami showed up and said, if you want a title shot, nobody's here to interrupt you now. He said, any time, any place, name it. So Braun said, money in the bank. Sammy told Adam that it's on. Adam made the match official, and Braun responded with, I'm going to destroy you. I'm very much looking forward to that. There was a show-long storyline with the Judgment Day, and Liv Morgan has bought them a new TV, a new game system, a whole bunch of stuff, and then in the process of Damian Priest finding out about all this stuff and questioning the gang, Dom got a text from Liv Morgan that made everybody freak out. Carlito said, that's cool. Priest disagreed. And that uh, basically we'll get to more of that later on. Triple threat match, women's money in the bank qualifier. Lyra Valkyria defeated Kyrie Sane and Shayna Baszler. The finish came when Shayna had the Kirifuda clutch on Lyra, but Kyrie came off the top rope with an elbow drop and hit Shayna. Lyra then grabbed Kyrie and hit the night wing for the pin. So she advances afterwards we get a shot backstage where drew mcintyre is arguing with adam pierce uh long story short drew told pierce that he trusts in him to do the right thing and stormed off basically drew wants to be in money in the bank and wants to not have to qualify to get there and it was Liv morgan by the way that was all the first hour of the show here too Liv Morgan got into it with Zelina Vega on a promo that had chance, fans chanting sloppy seconds when Dominic came out. 
<laughs> long story short with all of this uh live attack zelina at the end of all of this ray mysterio ran down to break it up dom shoved his dad down live of course is looking at him like oh my god my hero dom went running to the back live went following we'll get to more of that a little bit later on adam pierce came out of chad gable's locker room to talk to kathy kelly <laughs> kathy kelly asks him she asks about gable's mental state and pierce goes you know he's he's ready for tonight but that's not my story to tell you're the gm on a show where like people were seemingly slaughtered last week like you can kind of update us on where everyone's head is at i think that wouldn't that wouldn't have been a bad thing right Hi hippo laws uh that, that's true uh Liv was still following dom round in the back uh rolled up to him gave him a big hug uh said i know you want this just as much as i do because you shoved down your dad dom got out of there truth walked into the picture and said wouldn't it be nice to do something nice for a guy like that Liv said it sure would be and she knows how she said maybe i can get him a match for his friends uh, against finn and jd tonight for the tag team titles and and dom a, a match against his deadbeat dad for next week in truth because he's an idiot accepts the challenge on commentary Miz freaked out ran running to find our truth and try to stop it it was too late for that triple threat braun Strowman, bronson reed chad gable money and bank qualifier and Honestly, Tom, I mean, we're going to we're running short on time because of all the things that happened on this show, but the bottom line is Chad Gable won the match. A bunch of smoke hit the ring. Nikki Cross crawled into the middle of it and scared the hell out of Chad Gable again before handing a box over to Michael Cole which contained a VHS tape which ended uh up being Uncle Howdy interviewing Bo Dallas about what his motivations were. I mean, I know there's a lot there to try to cover in a couple seconds here, but what'd you think of the whole deal? Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, as somebody who has unfortunately, you know, lost a, a sister, I can empathize with Bo Dallas in this situation, and I'm sure it's cathartic in some ways, and you know, I'm sure it's making him happy to live out his dreams through this character so I, i'm i'm interested to see where it goes we'll get into a little bit of the details on what bo said during that promo last night when we get back on wrestling observer live Temper bb filthy tom lawler here with you to put a bow on this thing a lot happened last night on the three hour monday night raw uh chad gable tried to make amends with otis tozawa and maxine Otis was not down with that as soon as Chad turned around. He was in the arms of the Creed brothers and Ivy Nile. So the split between the groups continues on here. Alba Fire Isla Dawn defeated Caden and Katana in a non-title match. Then they were laid out by Damage Control. And in the main event, J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor won the tag team titles from R-Truth and The Miz. Um, so the VHS tape, what was on the VHS tape, a lot of editing there and uncle howdy asks how do you feel that you do you feel that you've been forgotten do you remember who you even are to somebody who's off camera that person's revealed to be bo dallas howdy asked him how he felt when his brother died bo said the most important thing in his life was taken from him howdy asked do you think you are exploiting your brother's legacy bo said i looked up to him and wanted to be him worked his entire career so he could i could he could be there next to him they were going to rule together and when they finally made it it was taken away from him no one feels what he feels and he would not let everyone forget what Bray fought for and what he believed in. Look, Tom, you got to do a lot of hoop jumping and wrestling. The physics of the Irish whip. Why do wrestlers suffer from theme music paralysis when they're standing in the ring? And obviously, we're going to have a lot of drama here. We saw the smoke machines back out for Chad Gable again. What do you think? I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Like I said earlier, you know... I'd like to see where it goes. I'm not against it. This isn't going to kill WWE. This isn't ready to rumble. Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sikoa or whatever his last name is. Paul, Paul Newman is watching this match. And he's not Excuse on me? Cody's side. 
What's the matter? Absolutely nothing. Everything's no. great. You know, Cody did say that he was looking for a manager. I think him and Paul Newman would be a... <laughs> what a handsome pair. <laughs> yeah. A dashing duo. That guy's a movie star, isn't he? Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.